This is one of humanity's scariest findings. It's a computer, the oldest in the world. It was a thousand years ahead of its time, and it highlights a grim truth about the human pursuit of knowledge. Nineteen o three. We're off the coast of the Greek island of Antikythera. Two sponge fishermen are at work, following their usual routine of submersions and collection of yellow soft invertebrates. While looking far and wide for some prey, one of them spots something it only ever heard in tales. A sunken Roman ship. Inside of it they find a treasure worthy of legend. Bronze and marble statues, gems, coins, jewelry of all sorts. But one thing outshone them all something indescribably more precious. A world-class expert on the field would later describe this moment as finding a jet plane in the tomb of King Tut. This is the Antikythera mechanism, believed to have been built between the years 287 BC. And as I said, it's the oldest computer ever. We'll get to the meaning of computer in a moment. And after its discovery, it ended up in a museum just rotting there, just like you are right now watching this video on your bed. But then, a year after its discovery, by almost pure chance, a politician comes in, he's the cousin of the museum director, and he notices something. In one of the few times in which a politician actually does something useful for the world, he realizes that this weird deformed clump of bronze and rotten wood has the faintest imprint of a gear wheel on it. There is bronze gears, likely carved by hand. Do you understand how bonkers that is? It's the first known use of gears in the entire history of humanity. And to top it off, it is an insane mechanism, okay? Based on the most recent reconstructions, here's the number of things that it can do. So first of all, it's a hand-operated mechanism. You had a little hand crank that would turn it around. And through that motion, it could predict the movement of the sun, the moon, the five planets known at the time, solar and lunar eclipses down to the hour of the day, the Olympiads, several kinds of them actually, there was more than one at the time, and the position of several constellations. Oh, and did I mention that it can predict the motion of the moon with scary precision? It takes into account the notion that the moon travels slightly faster at its perigee than it does at its, at its apogee. Oh gee, I can't f oh. say this sentence, it's the fifth time I try, this is going in a video. This little detail is actually crucial for determining who actually built this. And I'm not playing this up just to get you to subscribe, leave a thoughtful comment, like the video, or maybe use the new YouTube hype feature, which boosts me more than any sponsorship ever could, and it's completely free for you. Completely free. This is actually a mind-bending mechanism for the time. By some scholarly accounts, the earliest mechanisms that we know of that match this thing's complexity were built a thousand years after its creation. If you think about it, it's as if we found something from the year 1025 that had the same technological complexity as a smartphone. And by the way, I'm spending the rest of the video sitting at my desk because I got an inguinal hernia removed and my balls have turned purple. Here's how some of the fragments look. The biggest one of the 82 pieces, it's 18 by 15 centimeters and it weighs 369 grams. It's slightly lighter than a football for you freedom lovers out there. And the upsetting part is that we could have discovered a bit more about it, but when it was taken out of salt water, it wasn't treated properly. And when you don't treat something properly that's been sitting in the ocean for 2000 years, it's going to get warped and it's going to slightly degrade. But how was something so ahead of its time built? And more importantly, who the f built it? It must have been someone whose genius rivaled the modern geniuses that we know of. Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, the Ender Dragon, and we don't know anything about this person. In my research for this video, I uncovered a huge body of scientific literature on the topic. And as you keep searching, a whole world unravels right in front of your eyes, as you dig through to understand the inner workings of one of humanity's earliest technological wonders. So let's talk about Ptolemy, a man who lived approximately a hundred years after the construction of the mechanism. But stop peeing your pants, shut up and listen, it is important and relevant. This guy got a super stiff neck by spending his whole life looking at the stars. And while staring at planets, he noticed a little something. Basically, every once in a while, the planets who usually move with the stars, so they move eastwards on the beautiful night sky, 
stop and start moving backwards for a while, and then they stop again and they resume their forward motion. Now, their regular motion following the stars was named prograde motion from this guy Ptolemy, and the opposite phenomenon was baptized as retrograde motion. He put names on this wandering of the planets, which is kind of a funny sentence to say because the word planet actually comes from the ancient Greek for wanderer, due to this exact thing that I just described. We know that this apparent motion is due to the fact that we are watching other planets orbit the Sun with an orbital period that's different than ours. So sometimes it looks like they're going left and sometimes it looks like they're going right. But this wasn't understood until the 16th century, when the heliocentric model of the universe was put forward. Until then, everyone believed that the Earth sat at the center of everything, and that the planets were just drunk as shit. I guess. The machine was built by following an Earth-centric model, which means that modeling the motion of the planets is actually a lot more complex. They had to build this concept of prograde and retrograde motion using gears. They leverage a, a little concept known as synodic cycles. The best way to explain it to you is to just show you the synodic cycles of Venus. This 5-8 pair simply tells us that every 8 years, Venus goes into retrograde motion 5 times. And now that you know all of this, let me address the maybe controversial, maybe exaggerated statement that this mechanism was a thousand years ahead of its time. The earliest machinery that we know of that mimics those functions with that level of accuracy are the... Where the f*** did I put it? The St. Albans Astronomical Cock and the Astario, a bit of machinery straight out of Bloodborne, it looks fantastic. And it's from my beloved Spaghetti Eater compatriot Giovanni Dondi. Or maybe I should say Giovanni, as every English speaker science communicator f says Giovanni. And let's also address the strange claim that this is a computer. It actually is. It fits the criteria of analog computer. Analog because it doesn't have any electronic parts, computer because it uses mechanical quantities to perform calculations and predictions. That's what a computer does. If the phone you use to goon all day on r slash feedpics is a valid definition for computer, why wouldn't this be? One of the things that interested me most when researching this topic early on is that it's a very active subject. There are so many discoveries and theories that keep getting pushed out. Among the many, a pivotal bit of research was a 2005 x-ray project. As you can imagine, they took x-ray scans of the artifact. That revealed 37 gears lodged inside of it. And they also contained inscription. And among the various things written there, there were the name of some planets and the numbers associated with the synodic cycles I just explained to you a while back. You little brain rotted monkey. The man who spearheaded this project, a certain Professor Edmonds from Cardiff University, said something that made me pause for a moment. I have to regard this mechanism as being more valuable than the Mona Lisa. If you truly ponder the implications of the discovery of the Antikythera mechanism, you kind of have to agree with him. But the crucial answer of this stupid ass video remains. Who built this? And how? Well, let me stop edging you immediately by telling you that I can't give you an exact name. No one can. But we can do some clever geoguesser type of work like that rainbow dude and narrow down the possible geographic origin of the artifact by quite a lot. Based off of the astronomical details present on the inscriptions that were found with X-ray tomography, it seems that the predictions of the machine would work best for people observing from latitudes between 33.3 and 37 degrees north. And if we look at ancient Greece, the Greek island of Rhodes fell square into that because it was in the 35.85 to 36.5 degrees north range of latitudes. And secondly, <clears throat> oh my god, oh, I can't cough. I, I can't cough, it's gonna blow up my stitches. <coughs> and second, I told you that this piece of machinery mimics the motion of the moon very accurately. Well, the observation that our beautiful little satellite goes faster when it's closest to us was made by a certain Hipparchus. This is a man that's sometimes called the father of astronomy and for 
truly good reason. He discovered the precession of the equinoxes, the fact that Earth's axis of rotation, which is tilted, slowly rotates. This is the phenomenon for which every 13,000 years or so, the seasons on Earth will swap places. He also provided the most accurate estimate of the length of an astronomical year of the whole ancient Greek world. He was off by six minutes per year. That's a full day lost every 240 years. And given that he was so popular that they made coins in his name four centuries after his departure, it's safe to say that he was at the very least consulted by the makers of this toy for rich people. That's right. The fact that this instrument had accurate instructions written on it signifies that it was meant for non-experienced users, people who maybe didn't have a lot of familiarity with astronomy. To top it off, the quality of the materials and the effort it would have taken to assemble such a machine would have probably made it quite expensive. And if you really think about it, it's also safe to say that this wasn't a professional tool used by actual practicing astronomers. This is because, as impressive as the mechanics of it might be, any astronomer of the time had the relatively simple mathematical knowledge required to make the calculations necessary to predict the orbits of planets, or the eclipses, or the motion of the stars, or the next Olympians. Just like you have all the knowledge required to check out my Patreon and maybe consider changing my life, or follow my Instagram where I post the craziest, wackiest sh**. It's very funny. And there's lots of juicy details on information that I have to scrap for these videos because they don't make it in the final cut. Thank you. But don't be too sad about this revelation, because there's something sadder, there's something even more depressing. This mechanism probably wasn't a unique piece, right? This was something that was consistently manufactured and that was sold to various wealthy customers. And we haven't found a single other copy of it, and on top of it, there is no way that this is the first ever use of gears. Saying that would be like saying that the first building that they made after the discovery of concrete was the Empire State Building. There's no shot. And this is the unsettling truth that I was talking about. All of the works leading up to this wonder are lost to us, and there's probably so many more crazy, beautiful innovations, mechanisms, bits of technology that we might never discover. And there's even corroborating evidence to this speculation. Hero of Alexandria, he was a genius of his time. He lived just a couple hundred years after the construction of the Antikythera mechanism, and in his life's work he details so many beautiful, intricate mechanisms that do all sorts of things. Musical instruments, uh, machines for work, principles of mechanics of all sorts, and yet we haven't found a single implementation of one of his ideas. There's not a single surviving mechanism in our possession. It's harrowing. But our curiosity should not waver in front of such truths. We have something so complex, this mechanism in question, for so long overlooked. It kind of makes me wonder what other pebbles are in our possession that are truly wonders waiting to be noticed by a bored politician.